As president, the protection of the nation is my highest duty. Yesterday, Congress passed a dangerous resolution that, if signed into law, would put countless Americans in danger, very grave danger. The Democrat-sponsored resolution would terminate vital border security operations by revoking the national emergency issued last month. It is definitely a national emergency. Rarely have we had such a national emergency. Therefore, to defend the safety and security of all Americans, I will be signing and issuing a formal veto of this reckless resolution, and that's what it was. And I have to, in particular, thank the Republican strong, wonderful people, the Republican senators that were on our side and on the side of border security and on the side of doing what they have to to keep our nation safe. They uh, were very courageous yesterday, and I appreciate that very much. Congress's vote to deny the crisis on the southern border is a vote against reality. It's against reality. It is a tremendous national emergency. It is a tremendous crisis. Last month, more than 76,000 illegal migrants arrived at our border. We're on track for a million illegal aliens to rush our borders. People hate the word invasion, but that's what it is. It's an invasion of drugs and criminals and people. We have no idea who they are, but we capture them because border security is so good. But they're put in a very bad position, and we're bursting at the seams, literally bursting at the seams. What Border Patrol is able to do is incredible. I also, by the way, want to thank our military, because our military has been very much involved, as you know. And uh, they're putting up walls, in some cases temporary. In some cases, they were supposed to be temporary. They're so good that they're better than the permanent, so we're leaving them. We've really uh, nowhere left to hold all of the people that were captured. And we're at a point where we're just going to have to say, with these horrible uh, decisions that we've been handed by people that aren't living in reality, that there's nothing we can do. There's absolutely nothing we can do. We're bursting at the seams. You can only do so much. And the only option, then, is to release them. But we can't do that, either, because when you release them, they come into our society. And in many cases, they're stone-cold criminals. And in many cases, and in some cases, you have killers coming in and murderers coming in, and we're not going to allow that to happen. Just not going to allow it to happen. There has been nearly 2,000 percent increase in border-related asylum claims over the last decade. Part of the reason is because our country is doing so well economically that people are coming up in droves. The vast majority are rejected, but smuggling organizations making a tremendous amount of money like they've never made before are using these people to crash the system. Our immigration system is stretched beyond the breaking point. And as I said, nothing much we can do. We can just do our job and do it well. But there's a point at which, if the Democrats would, would get in, would be able to make a deal. Literally, in 15 minutes, we could make a deal on changing catch and release, changing the horrible asylum laws that are so unfair, changing uh, visa lottery, chain migration. These laws are just horrendous. I won't explain them, but everybody standing behind me knows exactly what they are. They're dangerous for our country, and they're inspired by Democrats who have to change. One in three migrant women is sexually assaulted on the journey north. The border crisis is driving the drug crisis. 70,000 Americans a year are killed by drugs, including meth, heroin, cocaine, and fentanyl. And the 70,000 people is a number that's so low that it probably shouldn't even be used anymore. The mass incursion of illegal aliens, deadly drugs, dangerous weapons, and criminal gang members across our borders has to end. We are bringing out thousands and thousands a year of MS-13 gang members and other gang members that are just as bad, where they come into our country, they're able to skirt the border, come through areas where we don't have proper wall, where we don't have any wall at all. And they get into the country, and they do a lot of damage in many cases, but we get them out by the thousands, and we bring them back or we incarcerate them. The national emergency I declared last month was authorized by Congress 
under the 1976 National Emergencies Act. And there haven't been too many that are a bigger emergency than we have right at our own border. Consistent with the law and the legislative process designed by our founders, today I am vetoing this resolution. Congress has the freedom to pass this resolution, and I have the duty to veto it. And I'm very proud to veto it. And I'm very proud, as I said, of a lot of Republican senators that were with me. And I'm also very proud of the House. The Republicans in the House voted overwhelmingly in favor of a secure border. Since 1976, presidents have declared 59 national emergencies. They often involve protecting foreign citizens in far-off lands. Yet Congress has not terminated any of them. Every single one of them is still in existence. And yet, we don't worry about our land. We worry about other people's lands. That's why I say America first, if that's okay. America first. The only emergency Congress voted to revoke was the one to protect our own country. So think of that. With all of the national emergencies, this was the one they don't want to do. And this is the one perhaps they should most do.